So the day has finally arrived. It's mild enough outside. It's always a few degrees warmer in the greenhouse. So I can open the doors, get rid of all the obstacles, and finally move the rest of the plants over to the new tropical hot house, which I'm going to reveal in a few moments. I'll show you what's been happening over in the greenhouse. We now have, and I'll just try and pan around, this huge space, it's really a relief actually to get rid of the obstacle that was there in the form of a curtain right across, separating and partitioning the two sides of the greenhouse. So it's great now to have this great big open space. So what I'll do, I will just flip you around on the camera and show you what's been going on and then take you around to the new hothouse and show you the situation over there. Okay, so as we come in through the double doors here, we've now got this huge space. Now it does look quite different, I think you'll agree, without the curtain there. And what I've done here, I've just zoomed back a little bit so you can take in a little bit more of the greenhouse. I'm gonna leave those walls up there. I think they look great. It really does open it up. I'd forgotten how large this place looks when you actually remove that obstacle in the way. The, the walls are good because you can actually hang things on the wall, so I'm quite happy with that so the whole thing now is going to be kept to 12 degrees and there are loads of plants that we can go for the ones that I've left over in this side you can see I've given it a bit of a clean with the emphasis on a little bit of a clean I'm not that great on cleaning things like greenhouses I must admit the plants that I've had to leave obviously I've left the mandevilla I think that's going to take a little bit of a hit I have to be ready for that it's still mostly in bloom. It's done really well, especially with the grow light up there, which I've turned off for the purposes of the video because it flickers. But I really, as you can see, unless I actually cut it right down to the pot, I really can't get rid of that uh, and move it over to the other place. What I'll do, I have got some cuttings and I'll start one off somewhere in the new hothouse. I've left a caloria because that's okay to go down to 12. I've a couple more calories over in the hothouse now. I've left this Phragmopedium Ains worthy eye which after doing absolutely brilliant for me for well over 18 months it's decided it's had enough so it's not really looking that great but i'll leave it i know it's okay temperature wise so that's okay to leave there these particular nepenthes the rebecca sopa that is a hybrid that has a whole range of temperatures like a really wide range of temperatures that'll be fine again it might be a little bit of a shock to them to suddenly come down to 12 but i'm expecting that a um, couple of dying orchids in the corner and that's pretty much it and as you look back now towards the cooler side of the greenhouse you can see that looking very very packed over there looking not too packed over here and what i'm definitely going to do this time i'm convinced myself that it is needed i've got to leave a workspace there i've already had that one but that just wasn't enough and i was finding that i just couldn't find a single spot to put something um, I've left the couple of Tradescantias, they'll be fine. Uh, um, so we've got these spaces and obviously any hanging areas. Notice that I've got this kind of plastic grid work. I have to say, it's not absolutely ideal. It's a lot cheaper than getting the metal grids. I noticed Mick at Mick's Mastavales, he has the metal grids and they're much better, they're much more sturdy, they look better, uh, but they're not, they're not cheap. They're quite expensive to buy unless you know somebody that you can pick them up from. So I don't know, I've not decided what to do about that over in the hothouse. So I think what we should do is go and have a look over in the hothouse and reveal all and see what it looks like now. I'm pretty sure I've got a little bit of footage I can show you as I am walking and talking to see what it looked like previously and then we'll be able to see what it looks like now. So let's head on through the double doors here move our way down past the now painted fence I have to say the weather's been absolutely dreadful recently and you can see the hot house there we'll just do kind of a, a pan round and see if we can work our way up to the door and show you exactly what it now looks like and you see so it's certainly different to what it was before it was used as a tutoring room and then it became an office with a computer in it we're still on half zoom here so that gives you a little bit of a wide angle so you can see what's going on a little bit more so basically what i've done is i have painted the walls white which as with all these jobs it actually cost a lot more and took a lot more time than i initially anticipated i was going to use some old 
tins of paint and that turned out that the paint had actually gone and I ended up making the walls look dreadful so we had to buy another tin of paint and I didn't buy enough paint so we had to buy another tin of paint and the brushes were all hard so we had to buy some more brushes well you know the story it just goes on and on and on anything like that I can't stand it just really drives me mad so I've got all the plants here that I think will probably prefer to stay at about 18 degrees um, I've it's actually set the temperature to 17. I've had to buy another one of those, one of those controllers. I already had the heater, so that's okay. Uh, I really need some shelving up there because at the moment it's looking really packed with things on the floor which I don't particularly want. I want the floor to be free. So I'm going to put some, I'm actually going to get some regular greenhouse shelves because it's really easy to put them into the wall with it being a wooden wall. Uh, the, the wall's quite thick, they're not that thick, so it should be fine to actually get things up there. It'd be nice to have something, some kind of grid to hang on. I'm going to buy, and I'm sure you've seen these before, these, they're, only, they're about £25 for two of them. I got two, I'm going to buy another couple uh, of these very cheap plasticky pieces of shelving and because they're modular you can make them as tall as you want so I need another couple of those and they are going to go along here so I'll have two like one going up to that window which is mm, roughly about five foot five something like that about a meter and a half if I've got that right another one there so that will take some pressure off this side over here where all these plants are and then over here we're going to get some more of the grid work and another few shelves. Uh, so that's what it looks like at the moment. It certainly looks better than it did before in my eyes. And it would be nice if I could actually get a couple of chairs in here for when the summertime comes round and we can open these big double doors here. That's no, just one, one set of double doors. And then we can look out into the garden when the sun decides to show what's going on. I've still got a few gubbins here of things that I'm doing. Uh, I need places to hang things. So I'm looking carefully at the ceiling to see if there's anything I can do there to rig up somewhere so that I can hang things. So obviously in the other place, in the warm side of the greenhouse, it was kind of optimised. You know, I'd spent a couple of years tweaking things here and there. This place now, the hot house at the moment, it was just a case of getting things in and uh, trying to minimize the length of time that I had both areas uh, like 15 to 18 degrees because obviously I was paying double uh, but you know none of these things even though I initially did this to save money nothing like this ever really saves money does it you know I've had to buy lots of different things I've had to buy the shelving you'll have to buy some more shelving at the moment I've just got the strip light the regular strip light which is lighting the place up not going to be enough I'm going to have to buy some grow lights which isn't something that I'm that happy about. So I've got a few more plants that you might not have seen, seeing as this is about plants. Lemon lime maranta. I couldn't resist it. Um, and I actually really like, strangely enough, the one that is quite common, the one with the purple. Um, it, it just shows you, doesn't it, that if something is a little bit rarer, a little bit more expensive, then you tend to go for that, even though like initially I thought the purple one was a nicer one, and then I convinced myself that I like this one better, probably because it was more expensive. I've got an Ontherium crystallinum, I think that's how you pronounce it. We've got one of those, that's a new one. You've seen the philodendron pink princess with a new leaf coming there. Um, what else have we got? We've got a few other new things that you've not seen. Uh, down there, every time I walk past this, I say, do not kill it, do not kill it, do not kill it. So that is my Monstera Albo Verigata, which is just developing some roots now, I jolly well hope. And we've got the other Monstera Albo Verigata, the Smargiv Mayfiona give me that one, Smargiv me this one. I know it doesn't look that great, but it had loads of roots on it, and it's just popped up with a new leaf there, so it can't be that miserable. I've had to bring the propagator in. And we've got some new seeds there just popping up. So they are my mandevilla seeds and there's my mandevilla cuttings. So we'll have to see if we can get a mandevilla set up in here, seeing as it looks so great. I've got another new philodendron here. So this one is Verucosum. 
looking really nice there. I'm really getting into these things. I think I'm probably a few years behind the times in terms of the fashion for house plants, but you know, you get what you like, don't you? Who cares? There's a spike coming on my Tolumnia, a first spike. And it's a shame really, because I've just had to move it. And you know what happens when you move plants somewhere new. So let's just hope that it's a, an improvement for them to come in here but they're not going to stay there these things have to be moved about and i'll really know where we are with things when i get the shelves up when i get the, the grid mesh thing up and when i get some more hanging space up and of course the grow lights it's all money isn't it it's all money really pleased to see that this connie boswell has finally decided to come back it just doesn't like the lower temperatures you know just a couple of degrees and it's not happy so i'm really chuffed about that because that one struggled for such a long time and same with the begonia f mazei begonia mazei f nigricans that's also beginning to come back with these gorgeous very very black velvety leaves so you can see the difference between the new leaves and the ones that are going to fall off so yeah, that's that's really nice. I'm very happy about that. So I'm not really going to do a plant tour. I just wanted to show you what it looked like, how it's changed and reveal the new space to you. So I am going to make lots more space to hang things, lots more space to put things. And this really is going to be a little tropical paradise hot house. And just before we go, I know it's only a foul, but it's a lovely little foul, isn't it? I'd just like you to comment in the comment section is there anything I've missed? Can you think of anything? Do you like the way it's gone? Have you got any ideas in terms of grids, mesh, hanging things, uh, anything like that? Tell me what you think of it so far. Don't put rubbish as an answer. <laughs> and for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.